or Liloc Farm in Tanay Rizal. We use solar panels or solar energy as our energy source. So our solar panel here, it can power the whole farm. It can light a, a bulb. You can turn on your computer and use it. You can charge some cell phones. We refuse to get our energy from the main power provider or energy provider here in this province because it gets its energy from coal and its dirty energy. My hope for this year's COP23 that it will make policies to prevent the construction of new coal-fired power plants. Also, they may create strong policies that will encourage the use of new renewable energies such as solar and wind that can really mitigate the effects or any impacts of climate change. Our organization has been part of different mobilizations calling for climate justice as well as on calling out different banks for financing coal. We've been holding educational discussions in our organization and have been active in joining disaster relief operations inside the campus along with other campus organizations. At this point where a lot of evidence have been proven and have been given by scientists of the truth of climate change, and the different communities already affected by these climate disasters. The Conference of Parties this year should really take more concrete steps in trying to mitigate and adapt to this kind of changes. They should take steps that will really end the, the funding of coal and shifting to renewable energies of different countries. They should pledge on stopping financing coal and pledge on stopping coal power plants. Matapos ang pananalasa ng Bagyong Hayan o Yolanda, sa hilagang bahagi ng Cebu sa Pilipinas, naging malaking epekto sa mga sektor ng mga maying isda, partikular sa tatlong mahalagang bahagi ng karagatan, ang mangroves, ang coral reefs at ang seagrass. Malaki ang nasira sa bahaging ito na nagdulot ng pagkaunti ng huli ng mga maying isda. Noong kasagsagan ng kanilang mga huli, sila ay nakakuha ng humigit kumulang 20 kilo sa isang biyahe. Ngunit matapos ang Bagyong Yolanda ay kumonti ito sa mababa sa 10 kilo ang kanilang mga kuha. Ang epekto nito ay nagdulot ng matinding kahirapan sa lugar. Every time I introduce green design to students or sustainable design, they have this uh, misconception that is simply all about using indigenous materials or even recycled or upcycled materials. One thing that they do not take into account always is how much energy was used in creating the objects that um, they've designed or the space that they have designed. In the construction industry, it's known to be one of the major contributors um, uh, for pollution and of course um, the use of a lot of fossil fuels. A lot of spaces in our urban landscape, for example, the malls, um, even civic spaces, even hospitals, schools, we utilize a lot of energy. So we should look into design strategies wherein uh, we can contribute less the impacts of um, climate change. What I see uh, for the 23rd um, COP or conference of the parties, they should look into the, how much we contribute towards climate change with the, with the products that we buy, with the spaces that we inhabit. Yung tinamaan ng Bagyong Ruby ay bumabangon pa lang din mula dun sa uh, pagwasak ng Bagyong Yolanda. Ako personal, naita ko yung epekto ng ganung bagyo no, dito sa Pilipinas. Yung epekto niya dun sa mga komunidad na tinamaan nito na nasira yung bahay, no? nawalan ng kabuhayan. Dahil yung Eastern Summer, karamihan sa kanila mga magsasaka at na, nagtatrabaho sa, sa sektor ng agrikultura. Since 2012, uh, I've been documenting stories on environment. I believe that the power of images is to provide to the people around us what is really happening on our surroundings. And I've been witnessing how climate impacts are affecting our communities. I've been witnessing the sea level rises in the coastal areas of the Philippines. I witnessed also how the survivors of the Super Typhoon Haiyan or Yolanda are coping nowadays. I am calling for the leaders 
and different organizations that are meeting now for uh, in COP23 to actually be firm in implementing the rules and regulations under the 1.5 degree agreement. We need more than just a law. We need more than just paper. We need an actual solutions. 1.5, this is not just a number. This is a number that in which our lives will be at stake. The lives of the future generation will be at stake. We should all go renewable energy. We should start stopping the use of dirty fossil fuels.